Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're back at the Shmi Museum. I've been in the United Kingdom for 15 hours and we're off again. Today marks the start of the Ford GT Tour in its crazy livery with the roof box all the way through France to Monaco and we're heading onwards to Spain. Now in this video, the first two legs, we're recreating a legendary experience that I had. My first ever, let's call it supercar road trip, my first ever vlog many years ago with the V8 Vantage Roadster. In fact, back in 2011, I drove that car from the UK down through France via the Route Napoleon to Monaco. We're gonna be doing the same. In fact, the last time I drove the Route Napoleon was actually about seven years ago with my 981 GT4. We're driving the exact same route, same hotel stop along the way. That was what, seven or eight years ago, picking that car up. We're now redoing it literally actually eight years ago. Time flies by. There are, however, potentially a few challenges awaiting us to do with roof box, wrap, suction mounts, Ford GT, small fuel tank. Yes, yeah, so come along for the ride and see how we fare on the way from London to Monaco in the roof box equipped Ford GT down the route Napoleon. I mentioned problems because if you followed any of the journeys with this car since I bought it almost five years ago now, which is crazy, of course, underneath it's red and gold, and we'll touch more on that in a moment. On a road trip, there are a few major issues. Number one, there's next to no luggage space. And when I say next to no luggage space, if you've never seen it, let me come and show you the amount of space that you actually have in the boot or the trunk of a Ford GT. It's that, one little bag, that's all you're getting in there. So if you want to take this car on a road trip, you need a solution. The solution we have was to fit a roof box on the top, the same roof box that I actually had on the roof of my Ferrari SF90 Stradale on the winter tour. It's painted in the same blue electrico underneath. But then the beauty of this is that inside here, as you can see, you can actually take a decent amount of stuff with you. We've tried to pack very light, soft bags, bright blue bags, of course, because Shmi 150. And um, I'm hoping that's gonna work fine. I'm really hoping. So that's problem one resolved, additional storage space. Problem two, fuel tank capacity. Now, on a long run in this car, 150 miles, 250 kilometers, which means very regular stops. That's probably a good thing because it means we can regularly check on how the roof box is holding on, but it's definitely interesting. Now, part of what we're doing, of course, is to head to Spain for Supercar Owners Circle's Spain weekend. The livery on this car is a pop art by the artist Louette. It brings together so many retro things, so many throwbacks, and the original artworks that produce this wrap, which we have an example of just over there, are actually going to be auctioned in a couple of months to raise funds for the mental health charity Calm, the campaign against living miserably, a super cool thing to be supporting. So we're taking the car with the roof box wrapped exactly the same all the way through Europe to hopefully raise awareness for all of this too. I think we're pretty much ready to go. The other cars are all parked up here. Like I said, I've literally just got back, seen what's what, and off we go again, but yeah. I think it's time for GT road trip and I want to bring you guys to the Route Napoleon. It's an amazing road. We'll talk more about it when we get there. But first, it's a long journey. A couple of hours to the Eurotunnel, crossing to France, about seven and a half hours to our hotel later on tonight. Wake up in the morning, a couple of hours to the Route Napoleon, then probably another eight hour drive again tomorrow. So many, many hours on the road, 17, 18 hours. It's about three or four more hours than the direct route to Monaco. And that's probably I'm guessing here, seven or 800 miles. It was the running in tour on the GT4 trip. I will never forget that. Picked it up from the dealer in the UK at 9 a.m., hit the road, met up with various of my friends. We had Paul, Supercars of London, Sam, Seen Through Glass, Seb, Seb Delaney, also just Jason. And we drove all the way across France, literally in the first two days doing a thousand miles down to Monte Carlo to bring the blue crew together. The first time we ever had all three cars of the blue crew in one place. That is a throwback and a half, but, it's time to go. Let me tie up a few things and then we're hitting the road. I'm hoping that this is not a sign of what's to come. <laughs> Literally, motorway and traffic jam. Um, and it's a little bit gloomy today as well. However, in France and in Spain, it's gonna be sunny and beautiful and have clear open roads and it's gonna be magical. I'm sure of it. For now, we are at one 
No, we're at zero miles per hour. Let's get one, let's get one. There we go. Magic. So we're gonna take this car through 10,000 miles on this trip. It's a car I have no intention of selling ever. We've obviously got the Quicksilver exhaust as well. We're gonna hear plenty of that out on some nice roads. And <laughs> that guy was just staring like, what on earth are you doing? And I suspect there are gonna be a lot of people wondering what on earth are you doing there? Look, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> he, he didn't look very happy this morning. Rolko, he didn't look, he didn't look happy at all. Crossing the Dartford Bridge, but there's no good view of London today. Not in this weather. Quick progress. Thankfully not too much traffic and we are pulling in now to the Eurotunnel terminal. Ready to go check in and retrace our steps. That's quite fun. A little Fiat 500 wagon. What a car for a road trip. They are in for a treat. We've parked up next to two nice Porsches, 911 Turbo S, but the good news I can confirm is that the suction mounts are all holding as they should, um, which has been my first cause for concern. There's not much suspension movement in a Ford GT when you try and shake it like that. But yeah, so long as that stays on site, life is good. Right, time to go board the train. It is time for us to board the train. It's been a long wait. We're about an hour and a half later than scheduled. We have the wide vehicle sections, as always, actually technically the taller vehicle sections, which is quite funny because this car with the roof box is still lower than most SUVs would be. But you've probably just noticed, as well as Schmoo the Cow being along for the ride, we also have Schmoo the Cow air fresheners, which are coming really soon. So stay tuned for those, and I will share more very, very shortly, as well as an update on new Schmoo the Cows. It's not gonna be long now. And just like that, we emerge into France, into the sunshine. Beautiful day. Let's go. Welcome to France. This is where I get to feel very smug as we arrive at the first telepiage toll as you go through France. In fact, I have a little cubby hole storage just below my seat. And in here, if I can grab it, I have my telepass which you basically hold up or can stick to your windscreen. And if there's a queue in the normal traffic lanes, you can go straight through like this and bingo, done. Nice and easy. I do actually have, I think, a referral link for that if anybody wants one, it saves you some money as well. So I'll pop that down below if I can figure that out. For now, back on the motorways, auto routes, where in the rain, the speed limit goes down and there's a really big peculiarity of the Ford GT that I want to show you here. On the dashboard, where you have the gauges or the trip information at the right, if you have that up, you can't have the kilometer per hour display. You can't have that and kilometers because it's miles by default. Even though these are built in Canada where kilometers is the norm, it is what it is. We've got Waze, it gives me one here. I've got the live GPS and we've only got five hours 45 to go. It's all good, let's crack on. The first of what will no doubt be many fuel stops, which is actually not too bad. To be honest, we've been driving so gently since this journey started that the fuel economy is vastly better than I thought. We'll have a recap at the end of the tour to see what it actually does. Fast forward and it's deja vu. A couple of hours later, 333 kilometers later, it's probably the highest mileage this car will ever do on a single tank, I would expect, cruising, on cruise control the whole way and a very expensive price per litre later although we now have a full tank in here which is what we need for the onwards leg there will be one more of these before we arrive tonight something quite funny about the Ford GT is this they call this a sun visor it does so little because it's not even very long and it doesn't fold down very far I mean on a car like this it's not really what it's about is it at the end of the day at least we've got something. Obviously the car is now covered in grime from the weather earlier, covered in bugs because we're splatting them non-stop as we drive. But uh, I guess somewhere along the way is gonna be an attempt at a car wash. It's the third time. We've done about 250 kilometers on this tank. We're not completely empty. So in theory, there's a little bit left. Is it gonna start? Yeah, there we go. The funny thing about this, this guy is definitely staring down anybody who's following us. But um, regular visits to the petrol stations, gas stations, when you're in a Ford GT, very regular. I'm super pleased with how it's going today. And tomorrow is the exciting day, which is coming up for you guys in a moment. So we will blast the final leg. We're very near Leon now. We left home, 
oh, I want to say about 12 hours ago, 11 hours ago, time change, one hour in the meantime. Um, so 11 and a half hours on the road today. That's a long stint. We have arrived here in Lyon. In fact, we are right beside some water. Sorry, you can't really see all that much given we are here at night, but we're going to the exact same place where we came with the GT4 eight years ago to find the hotel garage and go get checked in. You're gonna to have to take my word for it that the gaps on each side of the car were like this. We took it very gently, no video, because being distracted doing that would be a disaster and there was a car trying to follow me in as well. Anyway, time to get the roof box unloaded, go have a good night's rest, because tomorrow on the Route Napoleon is going to be epic. Bright and breezy, today we drive to Monte Carlo. In fact, the last time we were here, I had a bit more of a think about it. I parked my GT4 with Sam's F-Type on what are now their electric car charging spaces. Obviously, nearly a decade ago they weren't. Paul parked his Lambo just around the corner, but it is GT time. We've loaded all of the bags back into the car. We'll get it started, try and squeeze out of this, as I said last night, very narrow garage. And then yeah, a couple of hours down towards the Route Napoleon. Well, that was significantly easier than getting into that garage last night. And now we can actually see something of the view across the river here as we get started on our drive out of Lyon. Now, it's about 450 kilometers today. It is a beautiful day, which is lovely. Uh, down towards the start of the Route Napoleon before things start getting a little bit more exciting. So let's make our way out of town, hit the highways for a small stretch before it's up into the mountains of the Route Napoleon and some fun roads ahead. That is some seriously funky building. Not entirely sure what it is, but it is a crazy bit of architecture. Well, it turns out it's the Musée des Confluences, whatever that might be. Ah, nice view of the river over here. Nope, back under a bridge on our way out of town. Check that out. There's a Porsche 911 GT3 just up ahead of us. Random surprise on the mountain roads. Maybe we'll see some nice cars during the day today. This is a perfect example with that traffic jam of where you win having a telepeage because, I mean, every single person in that queue has to pull a ticket, pay, deal with that. And we can just skip on through. I say skip on through, but it looks like somebody got stuck there. Um, <laughs> you'll see the time saving though is massive, absolutely massive doing this. I thoroughly recommend anybody doing a summertime tour through France, make sure to get one of these. The difference of being able to just drive up to the barrier and it opening or not, there we go, for some reason didn't want to work through the window, is huge, absolutely huge. And away we go. We are now south of Grenoble at the start of the Route Napoleon. We've got some pretty spectacular views all around. Now, a quick little history lesson, because this is reminiscent of when we drove recently on the Transfagorashan Highway in Romania. Typically, you would do the Route Napoleon in the opposite direction. In fact, Napoleon's route was the opposite direction, coming back from where he had been exiled on the island of Elba, going back towards Paris. So this entire journey, effectively from Cannes on the south coast to Grenoble via a few specific towns up in the mountains. I've driven it many times over the years, always a breathtaking place to be, amazing roads, lovely environment to drive. We're in a little town right at the moment. Is that light about to go red on us? Yes. That was almost impossible to see. In fact, quite a lot of things are impossible to see in here. But up ahead, it's gonna open up. The scenery is gonna be breathtaking and there are gonna be some mega parts of road to enjoy as well. This is fun, hairpin to hairpin, going down the hill. Look at the views that we have. And in fact, this exact piece of road is where way back, I guess in 2013, I filmed in my Audi R8 V10 Spider at the time, driving also with my friend Sam Moores with his Porsche Boxster.
gosh, that Quicksilver exhaust sounds amazing. This is so good. What a place to be. This kind of road with these kinds of views, just uh, it's always a shame when you bump into some cars. Not literally speaking, of course, but following these cars down the pass. It might not be the most picturesque spot to have parked the GT, but there is a reason we've stopped in this layby, having just driven down that pass up on the other side. In fact, you can see the road coming all the way down. And that is because on that tour back in 2011 with the Vantage Roadster, I have a picture of it right here on the exact same spot 12 years ago. I feel like I need to do this trip again with the Vantage Roadster, maybe back with my friend Alex, Alex Smollick, who joined me on that particular tour. And obviously I've driven up and down this plenty of times. We were just stopped in a lay-by around the corner down there with the Audi when we rigged up the cameras for that. But it's a bit of a blast down memory lane, really. Just never would I ever have thought back then when I'd stretched myself into the Vantage Roadster that eventually I'd be here with a car like the Ford GT wrap like this with a roof box on it on my way down to Super Corona Circle in Spain. It's a little bit crazy really. It's very, very crazy, but many more nice twists and turns await us further on. So let's continue. I love this. The Zoe is on it. That's some local knowledge right there. Little underpowered electric Renault Zoe. And he's the fastest of the punch. <laughs> Amazing. I think we're gonna pull in here. This is a restaurant with a decent car park. Can we squeeze somewhere? Where can we stop? I'll figure this out. A quick lunch stop. We come back out and in front is a Hurricane Performante Spider, which is a very nice car to be enjoying driving these roads in, for sure. Anyway, the road ahead of us is actually much further than I realized. It's probably about four and a half, five hours from here to Monaco. There are some really nice sections ahead. So let's get a move on. Although it doesn't look like a mountain, that little crest there was the highest point of this whole tour, the Col de Bayard, I think, which is like 12, 50 meters or so. Not like crazy, but certainly of this part of the Route Napoleon, that's as high as you're going. On the left there is one of the Route Napoleon signs. I'm actually gonna see if I can pull in. Can I go up here? Yeah, why not? Have a be tourist for a second. Have a look at that. We are coming close to a military training ground, an airfield, and all sorts of stuff. There are some people up there currently parachuting. I've seen an airfield or an air show here at the airfield before, so sometimes there can be some random fun things that happen along the way. I think we're going past the aerodrome now, just alongside us. A lot of little planes and things around. I'm just, oh, literally one. Up he goes. There is a castle up on the hill. In fact, there are lots of those kind of things around here. This is really starting to become my kind of road. Remember, it is a road. I've driven this car at the Nürburgring, at Silverstone, at Hockenheim. But opening the revs up as we go up here towards what I know ahead of us is going to be really quite unbelievable. It's pretty cool. Reminds me of driving this car in Sardinia. Gosh, it sounds amazing. Quicksilver exhaust upgrade was the best thing I could have done for this car. Let's see if it's going to open and we can squeeze by somewhere. As we come up through the top here, check this out. How cool is that? The way it goes literally under the rock. What a view, especially out the right through the canyon. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. the Musée des Citroën. I have no idea what the Citroën Museum here is. That's something one day I should probably visit. For now, I realize there are a few other cool places only just off the route we're on, which we might go check out. Look at this. Look at the color of the water here. I'm not sure how much of that you can see. It is seriously blue. This is one of the coolest places I've actually been on Fuel Faction 
with the 675 LT Spider and actually some of the other cars as well. And uh, that day was a little bit of a stressful one, we could say, but we certainly got some very, very, very nice photos from up here. The crazy thing, though, is to have done this today in the Ford GT. I haven't really kind of taken that in myself yet, but to drive this car as many miles as we have, it's basically just shy of a thousand miles <laughs> from London to here. Um, yeah, kind of can't believe we've done that and that we've got it here with these views. Like, what is this place? We've got ourselves a tunnel. Oh. Well, this is absolutely a view and a half. What a place to have diverted just to come and take a quick look and to be here with the GT. I've said so many times, this is a permanent Schmimobile and it's about having these memories, getting the car out, driving it, not just leaving it as a garage queen, doing some more miles with it. And every car that goes past toots or waves or takes photos because you just have to see this thing and listen to it idling just at the moment. It sounds amazing with the new exhaust system. What, what a car to do this with. Case in point, even the lady that just pulled in is taking a photo. Everyone does, everybody that goes past. From tunnel to tunnel, first gear. <laughs> this thing is raw when you do that. This road just goes alongside the lake here. It's absolutely fabulous. Stunning view, amazing soundtrack. Drop down the gears just for the opportunity to accelerate again. What a place. Hey, look over on the other side, a water activity place wouldn't mind in this weather. As we go over this brow, there's a little area you can pull off on the left here. I definitely have a picture of my Z4 there, because in 2012, after the Vantage, I had a Z4, well, whatever was the current generation at that time, and did a trip down to Monaco with that for a month. Uh, lots of fun memories of that journey back at the time it just goes on funny story for you about 50 meters behind me where we're driving at the moment is where on that trip with the vantage 12 years ago a carrera gt came the other way just driving here between the trees a cgt popped by and even funnier is to think about respective values of these cars since because back then a cgt was worth 250,000 pounds and would now be worth £750,000 maybe, whereas the Vantage was then worth 70000 and is now worth 40000 They kind of went in opposite directions. Anyway, fun memory, didn't catch it on video back then at all, so nothing to share with you of that, just that I remember seeing it and I have that memory vision in my mind from back then and I guess we'll never forget that kind of thing because how cool was it to see a Carrera GT coming along here? The Mediterranean has emerged. A view out towards the sea, presumably down there, is either Nice or Cannes or something like that. And then this up here, by the way, is actually a prison. A prison where the prisoners have the most amazing view. Sometimes you just regret following your navigation system. And as much as I love driving with Waze, this isn't smart. <laughs> in a really wide car like a Ford GT. <laughs> oh, jokes, where am I going? And why am I coming here? Oh, well, we found a supermarket. If we need anything. Okay, we're in grass at the moment. Uh, yeah, maybe to the right here. <laughs> Just heard a guy shouting when he saw the car. Um, all right, south of France, and it's tiny, tiny, tiny little roads and hairpins and difficult garages are all pretty much the norm. This is the exit for Monaco. I haven't driven into Monaco this way for a very long time. We have a last payage, made a lot of use of these on this journey. I say these, I've actually got a couple of them for when we're doing tours of multiple cars, but it has made it significantly easier than it would have done otherwise 
and we're now arriving at the land of the supercar. You know, when we get into Monte Carlo, that is where you have so many crazy cars everywhere. So we've got multiple lanes. Now let's follow the Fiat 500 into this one. Are we ready to beep? They beep quite slow today, but there we go. We are through, down the hill, let's go to Monte Carlo. We're not quite there yet, but we are in a bit of a traffic jam, which I guess is quite normal. I think, there we go, on the left, Principality of Monaco, we have arrived. We are actually going this way. Gotta make sure I drive, there we go, we've got Monaco flags and the crest and all sorts. This is all quite new. I haven't been here for a long time, a good few years. And they keep changing the road network. They've done a lot of renovations, so the way that you actually enter the town has changed dramatically. This is familiar, this bit's certainly the same as it. Well, no, it's a building site. I was about to say it's similar to how it was. <laughs> it used to be like a bus turnaround place. Anyway, let's head down to town. We did actually, off camera, just see a Ferrari Roma in Rosso Dino, which is the colour of my 296 that is obviously waiting for us at home. Um, that's a police pole. Okay, well down we go. Lambo, a vent door, and there are also a ton of new buildings going up. You can see vastly less from here than you used to be able to. 4x4 four four squared. There's another vent door. Given that Aventador's with their single clutches are pretty horrific to drive in these kind of places, that's quite amusing. Um, we're gonna turn left here into Casino. This is not the first time this car has been to Monte Carlo. It's been here five years ago. Four years ago, 2019. Hey, <laughs> I like that, I schmierz, guys. Crazy. Not even sure what that is. But we will cruise on through. First time I've been here since the new layout of Casino Square. Lamborghini Urus. I'm just expecting nice cars here. But what are we going to see? Hurricane Spider. Welcome to Casino Square. Look how busy it is. Always heaving. I wonder if there's something going on. In front of us there's an SF90. On the right hand side, What's there in the lineup? Another event door and a 599. Uh, and there was definitely another Lambo. And on the left are a ton of Rolls Royces and Maybachs. Ooh, this is all very nice, isn't it? This new setup, the way you drive through. Cool. And <laughs> this obnoxious thing is driving through. Obviously, the F1 cars go to the left of us here, around the outside of this. And then. I guess we're gonna go for a ton of spotting while we're here. Hi. <laughs> In the showrooms, what do McLaren have? I guess normal stuff by McLaren standards. Another Urus just pulled out in front and also on the right here, we have Ferrari. Anything interesting in Ferrari? I mean, of course there is, it's Ferrari. Aside from the 296 and the 812 undercover, there is an F40. And also, I, I can't quite see from where I am, but <laughs> nice cars. <laughs> and Aston Martin, and all the dealers, and all the cool stuff. Into the tunnel, but don't be too noisy in here, or I know you get in a lot of trouble. In fact, quite a long time ago, I actually did in my 675 LT, which was stock. I did a downshift in the tunnel at my LT Coupe, and trouble followed. As we go past the Monaco Yacht Club, what's lurking, what's lurking? It's too late, too late, it's too early at night. Nice old Porsche, but not a lot else. And this is on the F1 loop, coming into the harbour and the swimming pool area with the yachts looking unreal. There's a Ferrari lurking on every street corner. Although that's got a wing on the back, a little lip spoiler on the back of it. And then the left of me, hello. <laughs> it's just yacht, yacht, yacht. Hey, this is a new car park. That wasn't there before. This was all like an outdoor parking area and it was a mess. So that is very helpful, although I have no idea if a car like this can get in. Well, the Murcielago going through is pure cool. Pure cool. I saw the satin grey and for a second I thought it might even be the Rebenton that I've filmed many times over the years coming through. The R35 and Murcielago. Good car vibes. G-Wagon in vintage grey. Well, that's very nice. 
Lovely. What a crazy day, a complete rerun of, well, a blast from the past, bringing cars down the route Napoleon to Monaco and bringing this car back. I'd actually almost forgotten that it had been here before. I came out with it with the Lusso. I think that was my first Lusso, the same time that I'd taken it to Sardinia. But to be honest, to be able to drive so many miles in a car like this and not get out feeling completely done with it is quite remarkable in the center if you did a drive like that it was intense and obviously the zembo would be really intense as well but this actually has quite comfortable seats and now quite a decent amount of luggage space the other thing that's quite fun is on that trip which was my first ever vlog road trip with the vantage 12 years ago the car went through 10,000 miles we haven't quite gone through 10,000 miles, but it will happen on this trip. We're only, I think, about five, 600 miles short, something like that at the moment. So the countdown's 10,000 miles with the Ford GT, but the first 10,000, I'm sure there'll be many more to come down the line. Of course, it will eventually be back in the red and gold, but for this tour, it is wearing Louette's pop artwork, which looks amazing. And the amount of attention it gets, it's almost, it's almost overwhelming. It's almost too much. Oh, what a drive it's been, what a day it's been, what a two days it's been, but we need to go and have some dinner, get checked in and pack up for this evening. Absolutely exhausted. So thank you very much for joining this drive. I can't believe that I've been able to get this thing out on the road like this, to just do this. It's, it's completely surreal. If you had told me back when I did that journey with the Vantage that a decade later it would be with something like this on a drive like this, I would never have believed you. So thank you guys for being part of this. Thank you so much for being supportive of it all, all the way through. And I hope you've enjoyed today's video. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.